guys, Kitty here, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be part of my React series. And since it's also Blogtober, we are going to be reacting to Entitled Parents at Halloween time. So, um, I got these all off of Reddit. The links will be in the description of the video. Um, so we're just gonna read them and react. Um, we have quite a few, so this might be kind of a long video, so here we go. Um, mm. first one is the little shit that ruined my Halloween. Um, this isn't as much entitled parents as it is entitled kids and completely incompetent parents. Um, so in my house, Halloween is like advanced Christmas. We aren't just into it, we are it. My dad starts setting up well over a month in advance, and we have some stuff up all year. The whole property all the way around has hundreds of decorations. So this year, my dad drove over an hour to get the last Jack Skellington animatronic available in our entire state. It cost around $300, but he had to have it to match our Sally by the entrance, so backstory out of the way. So while my dad's out there amongst the anim Maddox, Animatix, giving tours and talking with our literal professional clown friend who's helping out. I'm on candy duty. So a large group of kids comes to the door and immediately knocks Jack over because they are all wanting to crowd and not wait in line. But it wasn't damaged yet. They then almost knocked over Sally as I put up Jack. Eventually he's standing up and I can give them their candy so I don't even get a chance to say take two or take a handful. This kid just takes a handful then another. I tell him okay that's enough and he takes another handful saying wow this is so much. I once again tell him that's enough. As I take the bowl and move it to the other side of the door closer to the other boys he reaches for a fourth and I move his hand away. Finally all kids have candy everything's fine right? I can finally give the two little princesses who showed up their treats too now. Well I guess I was wrong. As I'm reaching the bowl out to the girls, I see the kid grab Jack and knock him forward on purpose. It feels like slow motion as he tip forwards and pop off with his head. Oh no. Jack is laying on the ground beheaded and I'm just standing there shocked as I see this kid walk away. The poor girl was trying to ask if she can take two, but I was so shocked it took me a while to reply and was awkward. Um, I still feel bad, but it, because it wasn't the girl's fault, I wish I could have told them a cheerful happy Halloween. After I give the girls their candy, I straighten up Jack and assess the damage, and yep, he's dead. I mean, dead dead. Not his usual undead self. Wires had a completely clean break. The plastics did not. Or the plastic did not. So no hope of twisting the wires back or fitting the head on. After a minute, I go to the group of parents and ask if they are the parents of the group. They say yes, and I tell them how a kid purposely knocked over Jack while he is cur currently punching our inflatables. They all immediately knew which kid it was and said something around, yeah, he can be a little rough. In a very boys will be boys dismissive way. Later, I found, according to my dad, the kid was still kicking and punching the inflatables after I left as the dad stood there and the mom said stop once but n didn't actually do anything. I eventually found my dad and told him what happened. To say he looked like someone kicked his puppy as he held Jack's head would be an understatement. I told him he can talk to the parents since they are still here. They might listen to an adult man more than an, a petite woman. But he couldn't find whose parent was whose as none of the kids stepped up to take responsibility for the kid. Um, so he didn't say anything. He's still been kind of down and I've been off. It's his favorite day and I'm so upset that parents will just stand there and not even care and think they shouldn't even be sympathetic that their kid destroyed someone's expensive property because they are a spoiled brat. This Halloween has been a bad year. Wow. I mean... I hate parents who just let their kids do anything. Anything they want, no apologies, no. I mean, $300 is a lot of fucking money. 
a lot of money and they barely got any use out of it they got like what barely not even a whole night's use out of it when they probably planned on using it year after year after year i mean if that was my kid first of all we would have gone home second of all i would have been so apologetic if i could have paid for it i would have you know if i couldn't have i would have you know set up some kind of payment plan to this guy um but god i hate people the next one entitled mom tries to ruin my halloween decorations because they scare her kid um okay so i i hate these posts where they say there's the cast but the cast me equals me Entitled or EM equals entitled mom, EMK equals entire title entitled mother's kid. When Halloween came, I saw this woman around my neighborhood with her kid yelling at people to remove the decorations. This happened to most of the people that had decorations on their front yard. I saw through the window that the kid came up, I opened the door and gave him candy when when his mother showed up. Um, entitled mother. Do you have any respect for this kid? How dare you put up this terrifying decorations? Ma'am, it's Halloween. Scary decorations are meant to be put everywhere. The kid starts to fake cry. Look, your stuff made my son cry. Okay, that isn't my fault for making him cry. Oh, yes, it is. It's your fault that you put these scary decorations. Ma'am, I saw you do this to other people of the neighborhood. You're just trying to get people's decorations removed and just complain about them. Then mom and her kids started to ruin my decorations. I reached my phone to call the cop center since no one else actually did. They just listened to her complain. When the cops arrived, she had to pay a fine about 500 pounds. I had no choice than to repair my decorations. Um, I don't understand what her goal was. I, I don't get it. Next one. Entitled parents ruined my shift on Halloween. Backstory. I, 22 female, work as a server at a local brunch type restaurant chain. Because we are a small chain, we can get away with more relaxed operating hours for the staff and stricter rules regulating what parties can get away with. One such restaurant policy of ours, important later, is that parties over eight people cannot divide their checks between patrons and will be billed an automatic 18% gratitude. Gra gratuity? Gratuity? Um, this makes it easier on the servers to take care of huge parties and also forbids the possibility of getting stiffed on a major tip. Makes sense. And now for the story. This happened yesterday on Halloween, which was a Sunday. I was working a closing shift, and on Sundays we close our doors at 8 p.m. Given that it was Halloween, I was, I was prepared for a dead-ass shift where I could close up early with my co-workers and head out of there by 8.10. Also worth mentioning is that I was throwing a party that evening that I knew I would be slightly late to, but nothing too terrible. Well, for a while, I was right. I had three tables over the course of a four-hour shift, and by 7 p.m., both the servers and the kitchen had 99% of their shit wrapped and ready to go. Then they arrived. Family of four arriving at 7.34 p.m. My hostess informed me that she had let the parents know that they would be closing at 8, or that we would be closing at 8, which the first entitled mother scoffed at and dismissed with a bitchy and... Whatever, I thought. It's just family of four. I'll serve them as quick as I can and get them the hell out of here. Nope. At, over the next 15 minutes, three more families arrived to join them, totaling their party at 14 guests by 7.50 p.m. There were two parents and at least one kid in each family, all clearly coming right from their rounds of trick-or-treating since they were all still in costume. Quick side note, this whole group of families was Middle Eastern and spoke Arabic, so I couldn't understand their side chatter. Don't know why that's relevant. 
Um, once they had all settled, they tried to place their order quickly. I was all for it, except I had to remind them of our restaurant's parties over eight billing policies. Can't you just, um, this is the first, the first mom that walked in. Can't you just divide the bill by family? There's only four families. I understand, ma'am. Unfortunately, even though I could manage it, it is against our restaurant policy to divide checks to parties over eight people, and there are 14 of you here. But that's ridiculous. We refuse to pay for it. Why can't you just divide the tables? Again, ma'am, I don't really have a choice. I'm just relaying the company policy. Since you're all sitting together, I have to, I have to keep it all on one check. If you'd like, I can go speak to my man. The second entitled mother at the end of the table huffs. They were sitting at a group of tables pushed together, so she grabbed the table she was sitting at and moved it two inches away from the others. Um, the second entitled mom. Look, see, we're not sitting together, so you have to charge us separately. This continued back and forth several times, and I held back many exasperated sighs. Eventually, I ducked out to talk to my manager, who was in a bad mood from earlier in the day. She left it up to me to decide whether to give in or kick them out. I didn't want to ruin the kids' Halloween because of their shitty, entitled parents, so I elected to let them divide by families because it wouldn't be hard to handle. But there is a catch. Because they were still a party of 14, I convinced my manager to let me charge an 18% auto gratuity for all four checks. So that was a tiny win. I take their order, no fuss. One of the dads, who we'll call Nice Dad, tried to order a beer on tap at 7.55. I told him, I'm sorry sir, our bartender has gone home for the night because we close at 8 this evening. Can I get you anything else? At the mention that we close at 8, his eyes widened. He was the only one who seemed to give a damn about the restaurant staff, so I wasn't mad at him. When I send a ticket with their massive order back to the kitchen, I hear the whole staff groan and curse. They would ult ultimately have to stay later than me to clean these assholes' dishes after all. 20 minutes pass, it's now 8.15, and I'm on the phone because I finished all my other closing duties. I notice that six of eight of the parents are staring at me, so I walk over. How's how's everything going, guys? Uh, the second mom says, yeah, is everything all right? Absolutely, what do you mean? I mean, what on earth is taking so long with our order? Our kids are hungry. I was livid and floored by the sheer audacity of this fuck nugget. In the calmest temperament I could, I said plainly, Well, sir, our kitchen was in the process of closing down when you arrived, so they had to get a lot of things back out to complete your order. But no worries, sir, it'll be out shortly. Oh, that was the entitled dad. The second entitled dad talking. My bad. Um, the worst part was that he was totally unfazed by the fact that we were closed. He just nodded along and let me leave. Their food comes out and I made a mistake by putting in an order of chicken tenders instead of chicken nuggets for one of the kids. Um, the difference between these entrees literally being the size of the chicken pieces. Entitled Dad number three was not happy about this and actually asked for it to be sent back and remade. That wasn't happening. I refused to do that to my kitchen staff. Instead, I said, I'm sorry, sir. Our kitchen is closed, so I can't have them make remake any food. If you'd like, I can cut up the tenders for you so they're smaller like the nuggets. It was dumb, but it was the only thing I could think of. This asshole said yes. He was so petty over the size of the goddamn chicken that his kid literally did not care about that he sent me away to cut up the tenders into bite-sized nuggets. I was fuming and my buster was cracking up at how angry I looked. Throughout all this, nice dad was shooting me apologetic looks and thanking me graciously on behalf of everyone else at the table. So they eat, pretty boring, but I was getting progressively more angry because I knew I was getting later and later for the party I'd planned afterwards. Immediately after they finished their meals, I helped my buster clear their plates one by one. What I didn't know was that my buster spoke a little bit of Arabic. That's where that comes into play. And he understood most of the family's side chatter. <laughs> Apparently, all four entitled mothers were cussing me out, calling me a rude bitch, and complaining about how I was chasing them out of the restaurant. Of course I am, lady. We're closed. And it's Halloween. 
All the parents glare daggers at me as I lay down the checks and scoff once they see the auto gratuity. Nice Dad thanks me again and leaves an extra $20 on top of his auto grat. So I was at least grace grateful for that. But they have now claimed the spot for the rudest table I've waited on in the industry. And I was so late to my party that it had almost died by the time I showed up in full costume and makeup. Total bummer and it was all because of these entitled parents who didn't feel like cooking on Halloween figures. Wow. Um, at least the, in, I mean, I guess it doesn't really make up for like the whole thing, but at least the nice dad like left you the 18% plus an extra $20. I mean, and, and at least you were able to do the auto gratuity. Like that is so awesome. Like seriously amazing. But yeah, like if you want to go out like after you trick or treat, with four different families i mean at least like go to a place that's actually open and going to be open <laughs> um or like go to mcdonald's or something i mean okay next one halloween entitled mother sees porch light off doesn't give a shit proceeds to ring my bell over and over then has a cow when i don't have candy i am a migraine sufferer and they pop up at the worst possible times one Halloween a few years ago, I had a terrible one and had to ditch the idea of answering the door for trick-or-treaters. Since I was so sensitive to light and noise, I turned off our porch light, other house lights, and went to bed. As soon as it got dark, it started. My doorbell ringing over and over, even though there were no lights on in the house. Every time it happened, my, dog, my dogs would go nuts, making even more noise and making me hurt even more. I ignored it for as long as I could, but when someone leaned on the doorbell and rang it over and over and over again, I finally flew out of bed and ripped the door open ready to go off. I expected a kid to be the one ringing the bell, but it was a Karen. Behind her were two little kids dressed adorably holding pillowcases. Me. What the fuck, lady? Porch light off is an international sign for no candy. And Tuttle Mom acts as if she's unearthed an amazing secret. <gasps> I knew you were home. She shoots the kids up to me and they yell out trick or treat and thrust their pillowcases at me. I had a huge bag of candy in the kitchen, but I was so upset I totally forgot about it. Girls, I'm sorry, but I don't have any candy. That's why my porch light was off. Um, and then to the entitled mom, I say, I don't feel well. I purposely turn off my lights so that I wouldn't be disturbed by children tonight. You should not be knocking on doors with no lights on. Entitled mom. It's Halloween. Surely you can suck it up for a few hours to do something that makes children smile. How can you not have any candy? I'm sure you have something in your kitchen you can give them. My head is throbbing. I can't believe this woman. Something in my kitchen? Yes, what else do you have that you can give them since you weren't prepared? Oh my god. The kids can sense that I'm frustrated and angry. They start to walk down the driveway away from us, hoping their mom will follow them to a house that actually has candy. You better go get your kids. They're leaving. Not until you get them something. They are owed that. It's Halloween, you selfish bitch. She then calls them back to the porch. So the poor kids. They reluctantly wander closer. Okay, fine. I got a bottle of ketchup or a box of noodles. <laughs> How about a frozen burrito or a pack of oatmeal? Does that fit your criteria? Get off of my property. This is absurd. You're the absurd one. My kids deserve Halloween treats and you couldn't even be bothered to pick any up. I'm going to tell other parents about you so they avoid your house. I laughed out loud. Promise? Yay, thanks. That would be very helpful. And I slammed the door in her face. I did feel bad for her kiddos. They got a shitty ass mom. <sighs> yes, porch light off means don't knock. I mean, come on. Not everybody celebrates Halloween. I mean, you can't expect everyone to have candy for your kids. Sorry. And the, and the kids seem to understand, which is the, the most ironic part of this. Because usually kids are the ones that get a little butt hurt, but like now it's like the parents that are the ones that get butt hurt over everything. Entitled mom accuses us of practicing Satanism for celebrating Halloween. Um, so for a little background, my 20 female mom and I 
live in Argentina and we run a little English institute in our neighborhood. That many students, roughly 25 to 30. Every year we like to teach our students about the different festivities and holidays celebrated in America. Thanksgiving, St. Patrick's, Halloween. They get to decorate the classroom and we have little parties where they bring snacks and play holiday related games. It's so much fun and they love learning about American culture. Their favorite holiday is of course Halloween. They get to dress up and we give them sweets. We've been doing it for years and never had any issues. That is until the last October 31st. The kids had dressed as princesses and superheroes and were decorating with cute little bats and pumpkins. Nothing creepy. We were having a good time until lo and behold appeared the most terrifying creature known to mankind, an entitled mother. She barged into the classroom without knocking or even saying hello while dragging her daughter by the arm and started yelling at me to get the person in charge. Trembling in fear, I scrambled quickly to get my mother. The conversation went something like this. Um, hello, what can I do for you? Now shut up and listen to me, you little Satan lover. Excuse me? You heard me. What kind of establishment teaches children about Satan and how to adore the devil by forcing down their throats a foreign evil holiday? Ma'am, Halloween has nothing to do with Satan. Bullshit. I know what I'm talking about. I read it on the internet. You and your daughter are practicing Satanism. Um, and total mom, if you calm down, I can easily explain to you what Halloween is about. No, I will not allow you to feed my daughter lies and poison her mind with your darkness. Oh my god. At this point, um, the kid looked like she wanted to disappear into the depths of the earth. The other children and I could do nothing but stare in horror. In case you haven't realized, this is a Catholic country. If you don't like it, you can easily go back to that country of... What? I have no idea what that is. It's something bad because they restricted it out, but I can't. Anyway, my mom was too dumbfounded by this crazy woman's ignorance to even respond anymore. Uh, the entitled mom says, I pay you every month, so I demand you cancel this madness or I will be taking my daughter to another institute. I'm sorry, but the other kids are having fun and enjoying themselves. I will not cancel Halloween for them just because one person doesn't like it. She goes red and starts screaming at the top of her lungs while violently yanking at the kid's arm towards the door. I will sue you. Here we go. I will notify the police and tell my church there are Satanists in town. I swear I will make sure you and your bitch of a daughter never teach again. Slams the door on her way out, never saw her or her daughter again, and I have to say I'm relieved. Though I feel sorry for that poor child, she may not be able to be able to celebrate Halloween, but she sure knows what it's like to live with the devil. Oh god, I just love, I just love religious people. Catholic people, Christian people. Oh, they're so crazy. No offense if you're Catholic or Christian and you're not crazy, but like the super, super religious, you know, those ones. Um, Entitled Mom says, only moms should be allowed to take Halloween off. Some context. My job allows you to request time off a month in advance. They always push you to ask further out so they have more time to find coverage. Days requested are first come, first serve. We are required to work all holidays except Thanksgiving and Christmas. Other holidays are usually requested way earlier in the year, so later requests are denied. Holidays are usually requested at least six months in advance. A few of my coworkers were all discussing their Halloween plans with their children today. They were complaining about not being able to take their children out because they'd been scheduled to work in the evening and had been denied the request. The conversation took a turn I should have expected, but I was surprised regardless. One of the women was one of the women ugh. one of the women was significantly more upset than the others and told the group, "I requested Halloween off two months ago and they didn't give it to me." I was going to take my kids to a pumpkin patch. They gave they gave the day off to Mike, and he doesn't even fucking have kids. He's going to go out and get drunk while my kids cry at home. 
Only moms here should be allowed to have Halloween off. We have kids to take out. All of these women agreed very loudly and kept ranting with her about other holidays and how it's wrong to not prioritize women with children over people who just want to party. The most ironic part of this is that I've heard the main woman brag about how she only likes being a mom on holidays because she gets the day off. And then she's pissed off because she doesn't get Halloween off and I have a hunch that it's nothing to do with her kids. I guess you don't get to enjoy holidays if you don't have children. I hate that. Like, I hate your decision to have children does not matter to anybody else. Like, you had children, so what? You have to deal with it. Okay, next one. Entitled parents try to stop Halloween. So Halloween just passed and I jogged some memories loose. The entitled parents at my school and church hated Halloween. They didn't see it as getting free candy and dressing up and having fun, so they did their best to destroy it, all because they didn't approve. Any mention of Halloween was immediately silenced. You got in trouble for even, even mentioning, mentioning trick-or-treating. You had to listen to sermon after sermon about how evil and disgusting Halloween is and how it's all about worshiping the devil. They had the same view on same-sex marriage. Of course they did. You were made to feel like you're failing the church if you dare even think about Halloween. All this because the entitled parents thought everyone should listen to them because they know best. Meanwhile, my Nana is buying us costumes, deciding the best route for candy, and laughing at the entitled parents' faces when they try to guilt her for letting us trick or treat. Here's how the conversation would go. Entitled parents, it's evil, it's disgusting, it's devil worship. Nana, oh my word, no it's not. It's a night to get free candy. Do you see them worshiping Satan? Well, no, but they get candy I don't have to pay for, and they dress up. That's all it is. Rinse and repeat for a couple of years. Oh, maybe I'll tell about how they tried to make 11-year-olds hate gay people because they didn't believe in it. Okay. Um, yeah. Again, crazy. Um, something about that, though, is, like, I remember a time when I was in high school where they tried that. And I didn't go to, like, a religious high school or anything like that. It was just, like, a public school. But they were like, yeah, no talking about Halloween, no dressing up for Halloween, like, no Halloween. Okay. Weird. Weird flex, but okay. Um. Okay, next one. Entitled mom demands me and my friend to leave restaurant due to our costumes being satanic on Halloween. Entitled mom leaves with shock. So I know this sounds fake, but trust me, I have seen worse than this. It's real. So here I am with another entitled parent story. This one is more funny than serious like the last one. So the story takes place on Halloween 2018. Uh, me and my girlfriend were deciding on whether or not to go trick-or-treating. Being 15 year olds, we decided not to go, but instead go through the night with costumes. So we did that. We were huge fans of Persona 5, um, so we decided to dress up as the great Phantom Thieves of Hearts. I dressed up as Joker, and so dressed up as Panther. Um, to those who don't know, Panther's outfit is not very appropriate. We went to an Italian restaurant where we met Entitled Mom and her family. This is how the story commences. Another fucking cast. Um, okay. So when the costumes were ready, me and Zoe decided, decided to first head to an Italian restaurant. <laughs> Why? Because my cousin was the manager and the store policy was that if a relative of yours was an employee, then you get a 5% discount. If it's holiday, if it's holiday, there's a 5% discount, special event, 5% discount. To get the 5% discount for Halloween, you have to be in costume. So we arrived and sure enough, there were a lot of people, most of which are in costume. My cousin comes out and says, wow, it's Joker and Panther. Me and Zoe take off our mask and reveal ourselves. Holy shit, dude, nice costumes. I didn't know you guys for a second. Zoe, you look fabulous. So do you, OP. Uh, Zoe says, thanks. At first I was worried it was going to be a bit tight, but now I don't see an issue. Uh, so can we get started? Sure, but first tell me where you are currently in Persona 5. We just beat 
Kamoshida, and we got Yuzu, a guy, I apologize, I've never heard of that before, um, oh, there is a long way to go, you will get there, trust me, the ending is worth it, we put on our masks and head to the table, um, I will get someone right away, thanks, we started talking more about Persona 5 until two kids dressed up as Mario and Peach and their dad walk up to us, the kids say, Wow, that's so cool, Mr. and Mrs. It looks cool. The girl started touching Zoe, Zoe's tail, the costume. Um, the dad says, "Stop! hey, stop touching that lady's tail. The kid says, those costumes look cool. What's your names? Um, Thanks, call me Joker. Call me Panther. Yes, we told him to call us Joker and Panther. It works, so I regret nothing. Uh, wow, uh, the dad says, wow, Panther, that's a, a costume right there. Uh, Zoe, don't worry. I did this because we are cosplaying as two characters from a game we love. The dad says, ah, cosplaying. Is it Persona 5 by any chance? Zoe says, OMG, yes it is. You know it. The dad says, I have friends who play it, but I don't play it myself. I have kids to worry about. If they find it, I would be in trouble. Anyway, those costumes look amazing. Did you make them yourselves? Um, OP says, no, we had some help with the masking gloves, but the rest of the suit we got online. Um, dad says, well, they look awesome. OP says, well, it was a pleasure for meeting you. The kids say, you too, Joker and Panther. I will see you later. Um, me and Zoe go back to eating. Zoe goes to the bathroom. And then this mom, entitled mom, starts walking towards me with a smile. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm good. I saw that, that my kids really like your costumes yeah they did we got them all online zoe returns to the table uh entitled mom's smile turned into a face of shock oh my god zoe is there something wrong you satanic slut <laughs> what zoe and i were taken aback by this people started looking how dare you wear something so satanic in a place like this what do you don't you talk to me like that. You are just a dumb slut, a horny mess. You don't deserve to be here. You're right. This does sound fake. Uh, this, <laughs> this is me being the white knight. I am. Lady, shut up. She can dress any way she wants to and you do not get to choose that. And this is so satanic for you. Why are you here on Halloween? Don't talk to your elders like <laughs> You are an idiot for dating this mindless slut. Okay, this so does not even sound real. I'm sorry. Like, no, this didn't happen. Um, what even are you supposed to be? Uh, the great phantom, phantom thieves of hearts. Oh, a bunch of thieves. <laughs> that makes you even worse, you <laughs> Um... My cousin walks over and pulls us to the side while calming Zoe and telling the mom to shut up. I'm so sorry for her actions. I'll get rid of her soon. Uh, yeah, thanks, dude. Zoe being the smartest girl I have ever met. Actually, I have a plan. Oh my god. A plan that will probably scar her for life. Or at least whatever she has left. <laughs> Me and cousin were confused, so we asked what it was. We stood there in shock, but then I said, that is why I love you. <laughs> you always think outside the box. So smiled and told me she loved me for being so accepting. Uh, wait, who the hell is the RP? Hold on, go. Okay, the RP is some random police officer. Okay. Um... Uh, the RP enters and says that he can help us with the plan. <laughs> he was dressed up as Sherlock Holmes. He also had a British accent, so that fit him perfectly. He knew we weren't doing anything wrong and just wanted the entitled mom to leave. So the plan is in motion. <laughs> this sounds so dumb. We hand Zoe a glass of water and she seductively might I <laughs> walk back to the <laughs> oh the little <laughs> oh the little horny and dumb slut came back like a dog looking for food 
what? This went all backwards. <laughs> the plan has started. Uh, oh my god. So, <laughs> with a moany voice, <laughs> oh fuck me, this water tea is really good, <laughs> entitled mom looking confused, <laughs> what the fuck are you saying, so cuts her off speaking in a stereotypical dumb blonde voice, haha uh -huh, water is so like good. <laughs> It tastes is weird, but I can look past it. The people looking were laughing a bit. Entitled Mom was paralyzed at what happened next. What? Zoe sat down. <laughs> she began to slowly drink her water. Then Zoe accidentally pours the water on her suit. Oh no, I ruined my costume. But moan, the, we the feel of water is so moan good. What the fuck? Um, Zoe started to rub her body, pouring more water onto it. Entitled Mom shocked. S stop! Stop that right now. Zoe moaning louder as she kept rubbing herself. Is this some kind of freaking, um, fan fiction? <laughs> um, but you said it yourself. I am just a mindless, horny slut, and my boyfriend must be an idiot to date someone like me. Entitled Mom then realizes the scenario she is in. She looks at me and I slowly but surely flip her the middle finger and point it to my head as a sign of you just fucked up. Um, cousin acting normally. What is going on here? Entitled Mom. Oh, thank goodness you are here. You need to manage your cuts or off. Manage your cousin, whatever. I am not talking to you. I was talking to the dumb slut. <laughs> Zoe still moaning and rubbing. Aren't there like little kids in this restaurant? <laughs> uh, oh, thank you, cousin. You are my hero. This old bitch wanted to interrupt my process. Oh my god. Cousin says, okay, that's it. And total mom, you are banned from the store for interrupting the natural order of things. And total mom was pale. She then said something that would bite her in the ass. I will not leave because I am an elder and I have a right to be here. I am always right and this slut is doing this just out of, the police officer says, out of what? She is doing this because she is a dumb slut and all dumb sluts are horny. Did you forget what you said after all the elders know the truth? Entitled mom was furious and wanted to assault Zoe. The minute she laid her finger on Zoe, she had a fake orgasm. What the f fuck is this fanfic shit? What? <laughs> oh, please leave me alone. I just need to be the dumb slut I am and relieve myself. The police officer says, that's it. Pulls out his badge. I am going to arrest you for assault and pedophilia. And <laughs> title mom then booked it out of there, leaving her husband and kids behind, saying how she will sue. Zoe then stops. Finally, she is gone. Some people just don't have manners. Everyone then stops la starts laughing. Of course they do. Cousin says that due to them having to deal with that, the discount is with that. The discount is for everyone, and those in costume get a ten percent off discount. Me and Zoe go back to eating peacefully. Um, cousin goes back to work, and police officer leaves. Um, the dad and the kids walk over to us. I'm sorry for her actions. Well, it doesn't matter now. She is gone. Everyone is happy. Oh my god. The kid says, that was an awesome performance, Panther. Oh my god. So, thanks. I was worried at first, but then this turned out to be a good plan. The dad says, we will pay for everything. Don't worry about it. Me and Zoe leave and spend the rest of the night walking around and taking pictures with people. We never told our parents because, yeah, what happened could have genuinely scared them and ended our relationship before it ended due to Zoe's true sexuality. What? Moral of the story, do what the entitled mom describes you as, but make it a quadrillion times worse that it creeps the entitled mom out. 
Um, edit, the police officer did not leave to chase the mom. He left because he wanted to go back to his family, who was in the park. Um, the dad was not your typical grown old man. He actually looked like 22 or something. Also, before anyone asked, I asked my girlfriend how she knew to do that. She responded with, I learned it from the same place you watched it. We were 15 when we first saw, when we saw our first porn. Um, okay. Okay, if this story, this story is 100% made up. I don't care that you say it's not. It's 100% made up. Like, there's no fucking way. No fucking way in hell that that was not made up. I mean, it gave me such a good laugh, you guys. Like, I, I'm genuinely, I feel like I'm in a better mood now. Because that was just so freaking hilarious. Okay, next one. Good dog defends her home from the evil forces of a Halloween entitled mom. This story is thankfully not as extreme as some others here, but I got wind of it recently and felt I just had to share it. So here goes. I'll preface by saying that I was sadly not pres not actually present for any of this. It was just relayed to me by my little sister, so dialogue is obviously going to be inferred, paraphrased, but the basic gist is the same. Halloween this year was frigid at home, so my family didn't see a whole lot of trick-or-treaters, but for the few kids who were willing to brave the icy night, there was great reward awaiting them at my family home. My parents always buy a lot of candy, and since there were fewer kids this year, that meant the portion sizes ended up being greater for those who did show up. Although, or Alongside the extra candy, though, there was another great surprise for the kids who came to the door. Ted's. For those who don't know, so probably everyone, Ted's is my squishy-faced 100-plus pound massive puppy who is still growing and still seemingly unaware that she can't fit into anyone's lap anymore. My other dog, Clover, was upstairs with Wendy, one of my little sisters, as she's a sweet girl but tends to lose her mind whenever somebody knocks on the door. Wendy's twin sister, Erin, however, who loves doing special effect makeup, had put on some pretty cool gore effects and stayed down to answer the door. So any kids who came up got a good look at both Erin with a full face of fake staples and stitches and Ted's with a full face of cute. With that scene set, let's get to what actually happened. About an hour or so into the night, only a handful of kids had shown up, and Aaron has decided, screw it, I'm going for it, and has begun handing out massive fistfuls of candy to the kids. Obviously, this makes her pretty popular, even if some kids were initially freaked out by the whole zombie girl with a massive dog thing going on. A knock comes at the door, Aaron answers it. On the other side of the door stands a little boy with chubby cheeks and messy hair, wearing a Spider-Man suit, sans mask that was apparently a bit hard to see under the under the gigantic winter coat he had over. He's shivering but still smiling as he holds out a plastic pumpkin bucket and says trick or treat. Aaron estimated him to be around the upper end of toddlerhood and was absolutely delighted by him. She adores kids when they're not being brats and she's a huge fan of Spider-Man so she was instantly rather fond of this child. The kid, who I'll just call Danny because why not, okay, looked a bit startled by her face at first, but she quickly explained it was just makeup, to which he perked back up and seemed really excited, further cementing Aaron's love for this child. Suddenly, as she's busy heaping candy into this bucket, a, ugh, a big blocky head squeezes out from behind Aaron's legs, sniffing curiously. Danny's jaw drops and Aaron swears she could see literal stars in his eyes. Is that a doggy? Danny asks. Yep, Aaron replied, giving Ted's a quick pat on her big old noggin. Wow, Danny exclaims. He's so big. That she is, Aaron says, stepping aside a little so Ted's isn't squashed between her legs and the door. Can I, <clears throat> can I pet her? Danny asks. Aaron is beaming because a little kid who understands and follows dog etiquette is a godsend unto, unto itself. Sure you can, buddy, Aaron says, lightly grabbing hold of Ted's collar so she won't try to jump or anything. Uh, Danny pets Ted's with a level of reverence not normally found in children. He is utterly awestruck at the size of this big baby. All of a sudden, from down the driveway, there comes an awful shriek, startling everyone present. What are you doing? Lo and behold, it's Danny's mother, who up until this point had been standing at the end of the driveway, playing on her phone without so much as a glance in our direction. Apparently, the fact that her son was spending so long on our doorstep 
was enough to pry her away from Candy Crush or whatever, because she had finally decided to look up. She must not have liked what she saw, as she was now bolting up the driveway with a vengeance. Danny's mother, henceforth known as Deborah, grabs her son by the shoulder and yanks him backward, very backwards, pretty violently, nearly knocking the poor kid over. Ted's being a guard dog is naturally put off by this thing. Come charging wildly towards her house and her people. She squares her muscly shoulders, settled, settles her fist-sized paws firmly on the ground, draws herself up, and lets out a jaw-flapping wolf. Are you trying- are you describing Bolt right now to me? Now will probably be a good time to mention that Tedderton, the tank tax evader, what the fuck, has a very powerful bark. It's deep, resonating, and absolutely shit your pants terrifying if you aren't expecting it. When the dog barks, the earth beneath her trembles. Deborah shrieks in fear, darting back. Danny seems startled for a second, but then starts clapping his little toddler hands in obvious delight. Good kid. What is that thing? Deborah screeches, reeling away in a combination of terror and repulsion. Um, a dog? Aaron replies, not at all politely. I might have accidentally rubbed my take no shit, give no fucks attitude on to her. Oops. What? Deborah yells, but it's huge. Dogs aren't supposed to be that big. Good ones are, Aaron said blandly. She's always been of the Ronald Swanson opinion on dogs, as have I. Uh, who the fuck cares? Why were you letting it near my son? Dogs outside shouldn't be anywhere near children. You should know better. Deborah snaps. It could have eaten him. In all fairness, Ted's was probably twice the size of the kid, easily, but that was still obviously a stupid thing to say. Now, she's already had her dinner tonight, Aaron replied. She's not hungry. Deborah opens her mouth to retort, but then does a double take, her expression twisting back into horror. What is wrong with your face? She exclaims. It's okay, Mama, Dammy. Dammy. Danny pipes up before uh, Aaron can say anything. She's not really hurt, it's just makeup. Um, are you out of your mind? Why would you be answering the door for children when you look like that? Deborah demands, ignoring her son entire entirely. I don't know, maybe because it's Halloween? Aaron draws. Now listen here, you. Deborah points a finger towards Aaron and goes to take a step forward when she is stopped by another earth-rattling bark from Ted's. The harpy yelps and darts back again. Ugh, Deborah screams. What is wrong with you? Can't you control that thing? Well, first off, she's a guard dog, and you came at me yelling, so of course she got antsy, Aaron replies. Deborah opens her mouth to argue, but Aaron doesn't give her a chance. And second off, she's still a puppy, so we're still working on some of these things. That's, that's not a puppy, Deborah says, obviously shaken. Don't lie to me, that's way too big to be a puppy. Nope, puppy, Aaron says. She's gonna get even bigger, too. It's going to get bigger? All color has drained from Deborah's face. All color has also drained from Danny's face, but that's because it's balls cold outside. And this poor child has been stuck standing there while his mother yells at a teenage girl. Yup, Aaron replies, popping the P sound with an evil grin on her face. Is this another fan fiction? I think this could be another fan fiction. Maybe another 90 pounds or so if she takes after her dad. Come on, Danny, Deborah says, suddenly in a huge hurry. We're leaving. She seizes Danny's arm and begins to walk away. Bye, miss. Bye, big doggy, Danny says, waving his little toddler hand happily at the two of them, seeming completely unfazed by his mother's behavior. Bye, Aaron said, waving back. Happy Halloween. She then closed the door because, again, it was cold and watched them leave. When Deborah glanced back over her shoulder, Aaron grinned om ominously at her and waved, nearly bursting into hysterics at the speed with which this woman whipped her head back around at the sight. Aaron says she hopes Danny turns out all right and that she kind of hopes she runs into Deborah again, if only so that she can terrorize this hoe with her giant child-eating dog a little more. Ted's was given many a treat that night. Why are y'all writing full freaking fan fictions on Reddit? That's, that's what it sounds like to me, like a full friggin' fan fiction. Okay, my entitled dad made me cry in public because of a Halloween mask. This is the first time I posted. I'm still in this household, so kind of scared. Forgive me if this is messy. I'm not too good at remembering things. Um, 
I believe I was around 10 to 12 when this happened. I was on a trip with my family to the college my dad went to. He graduated from Penn State, something he is super proud about. We have been there multiple times. We stopped at a cave attraction on the way to the college. It's one of those places like Crystal Cave, if you know the place I'm talking about. They have panning for rocks things there. A gift shop too, just the basic stuff. I brought along something I'd made, a cardboard Halloween mask. A full face mask, it is painted white with the black facial features. The eyes are cut out circles with black fabric to hide my eyes and it had a wild, wide smile along the bottom. My mother usually doesn't care what I wear in public. She thinks it's funny, I don't know. My father though made it very clear that he didn't want me wearing it. Of course, I didn't want to be there in the first place so I didn't want to take off my mask. My mask made me feel less seen, even if it does the opposite. Like, they're not actually seeing me if I don't want to be seen. I didn't feel comfortable without it at the time. So I tell him that it won't matter and we don't know anyone here anyways, which of course means nothing to him. I'm embarrassing him. It also counts as talking back apparently, so of course he needs to start threatening people. After being made to leave the mask in the car, we start walking towards the entrance of the gift shop. The conversation argument was still going on since my sister was telling off my father. She always does. He turns around, of course all angry that I'd talk back to him and making remarks around my mask. He says not to talk back to him again or something like that or he'll smack me. My sister says something and he turns around with his fist aimed at my face. He thought it was me who talked. He just tried to punch me. It didn't hit me, of course, he missed, but that's not the point. This man proceeds to insult me and continue walking, ignoring the fact that I am now bawling my eyes out. I am, still in fact, bawling my eyes out when we get to the building and as we are inside. I, I walk around with my sister getting looks because of how loud I'm crying. He's angry and is talking to my mother, who has nothing, done nothing about all this, by the way, saying how I'm a bitch and a crybaby. In the end, he buys me a stuffed animal in the gift shop, and I have to pretend I'm not still upset because he bought me something, which means sitting right across from him on a small boat in a dark cave surrounded by other people. He asks if he didn't just try to punch me in the face, making awful jokes with the tour guide, taking pictures of rocks he's seen twice before. Um, I'm sorry that that happened to you. That sucks. Okay, this is the last one. Karen at a Halloween party. The story takes place a few months ago, like a week before Halloween. Now before we start with the Karen, we first gotta start with the stuff a bit before the party, which might also have a little bit to do with the Karen. Now we were going to host a Halloween party for the 4th and 5th graders in our school. This is the Swedish school system, I don't know what grade it would translate in the US or UK. This was also around the time that Squid Game got really popular, so my classmates put some Squid Game stuff in the poster for it. Mainly the square circle and triangle of the guards that uh, was equivalent to the different classes of tickets that include different deals and perks. Anyway, because it was kind of referencing Squid Game, some parents had reached out to the headmaster of our school saying that they would not their let their kids go if it was based around Squid Game because it is not kid friendly, etc. Anyways, now we head over to the actual party. Me and my dad arrive at the school like an hour before the party would start to prepare for it. My dad and a few other parents sat down at the bottom floor while me and my classmates prepared. Then the kids arrived outside. I went to go down and check. There I found a bunch of kids that would be at the party along with the moms of a kid yelling at my dad that this is unacceptable. This is how it went from my dad's point of view. The guests arrived with a mom of a kid with a few friends of him. The mother hears that the entry was not free, but that it was different classes. Neither me or my dad remember which it was about. Then she almost said the iconic line of Karen's, I wanna to speak to the person who planned this. Um, dad says it was all the students in the class. I think they did a pretty good job. They keep ranting for a bit until everyone pays for entrance, entrance and stuff. Luckily she did not do anything else and we made about $400 from basically scamming kids. Um, I don't know why you're proud of scamming kids, but, um, yeah, okay. I don't really think that that was too much of an entitled parent, but, like, if you're not happy with the theme, why did you let your kid go? Anyway, that was a lot. I've been talking literally for an hour. Um, yeah, that was a lot. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Vlogtober, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.